Hi, my beloved brothers and sisters. Um, today I was going to do another one of these uh, readings from this uh, uh, minister who people who know me know that I love by the name of John Toller. That's a short sermon that he gave. Uh, and he's one of my all-time favorite ministers, and I haven't actually even read this read it yet, but I felt the Holy Spirit come on me real strong uh, right when I started reading it, so I thought, hmm, maybe I'll read this to my uh, um, subscribers as well. So... Now, the name of the message is The Call to Peace. And before I read it, let's just pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we just thank you uh, that we can uh, enjoy your word, and we can enjoy your word from, it doesn't matter when, you know, this man of God was a man of God from 800 years ago, and his word is just as relevant today as, as it uh, was then. So we just give you praise and honor for uh, all of our brothers and sisters throughout all decades, and we just pray that you, will, Holy Spirit, you will be with us to help us receive this word in Jesus' name. We love you so much. Amen. So, the call to peace. Starts off with the Bible verse. He says, Jesus said to them, Peace be to you. And uh, that was quoted out of the book of Mark. And the sermon begins, Peace be to you, exclaimed our beloved Lord, as he appeared to his disciples after his resurrection. All men long for rest and peace by a law of their own human nature. Towards this end, they are all directed and are all striving and with all their manifold labors and all their devotions and all their spiritual exercises, but they will never attain true peace. No, not even if they struggled for it for all eternity, except they seek it where alone it can be found, namely in God. What, then, is the way to this true peace? As it is in most perfect, as it is in the most perfect truth in God. We may learn this by the threefold vocation of the Apostle John. For in this way does God call all men to eternal peace. The first way was when he called the Apostle John from the world and made him an apostle. The second was when he drew him close to him and made him to rest his head on his bosom. And the third and most perfect was on the holy day of Pentecost when he gave the apostle the gift of the Holy Ghost and opened the door to his entrance to perfect love. And so shall you be first called, namely, to give up the world. This means to subject all thy lusts and all thy appetites and to learn to know thyself to learn to know thyself thoroughly and remain at home within thyself watching all thy words carefully unless you say anything different from what you would have others to say to you Also, keeping guard over all your emotions and scrutinizing them as to whether or not those emotions come from God and, if, and, and judging if they are fit to be directed back to God again. Over your thoughts, never harboring evil thoughts or occupied with idle ones. And if they intrude themselves against your will, struggle manfully against them, and using this conflict as a preparation for better things, finally over your works, so that in all of them uh, you, thou hast God alone and his honor in view, and the happiness of thy fellow men. It is in this wise that the Lord calls thee from the world and makes thee his disciple. And then thou hast learned the change from being an outward living man, so living on the outward, to becoming an inward living one. And of such a kind is the beginner in the spiritual life. So pretty much taking every thought captive, taking your uh, 
taking your thoughts, what you say to other people, that you would only be the words that you would want them to say to you, and taking control, making sure your emotions are coming from God, you know, and not, not uh, or if they're not coming from God, or if they're against what God would have you to do, that you manage them and watch them and take control of them. And the only only things that you are allowing into your mind are things that we, that you know God would be pleased to, if, if you were to send those back in his direction. You know, taking, wow, that's good, and Okay, so the second call is to re is to rest on Christ's breast. If you will enjoy this privilege along with the Apostle John, then uh, you must be tr then you will be transformed into the holy and living image of our Savior. It means that you will cultivate very diligently uh, to study His blessed meekness. meekness and his burning love for friends and foes, and his wonderful and most self-denying indifference to all things except his Father's will in all methods and states and ways of life. Consider his boundless kindness to all of the human race and also his blessed poverty. Heaven and earth were his, and he owned it all. But he was in it as if he owned nothing at all. Every word he spoke, everything he did, was for his Father's honor and the happiness of all of mankind. Look yet even closer upon Jesus. Look deeper into his heart. Study him with perfect attention and then look upon yourself and behold how different you are from him and acknowledge the things that are petty pettiness now it is when you honestly have done this that our lord draws uh, you to himself and makes you to rest your head upon his bosom for in this end, there is nothing so useful of a holy sacrament of our Savior's body and blood, of the whole, nothing so useful as the holy sacrament of our Savior's body and blood, and thou, and then thou shalt be also added by the counsel of one whose soul has been enlightened by the divine grace more fully than your own. Thou shalt hereby be so filled with his sweetness, the sweetness of heavenly consolation, that thou can easily renounce all of the sweetnesses of this world. Hallelujah. So it says, just get lost in the heart of Jesus and just notice all your little, your little things that are inside of you that are just petty. And let them all go, and then just go all in on the heart of Jesus, and then be transformed by the heart of Jesus, by the love of Jesus, and by his sweetness. Because his sweetness is more sweet than all the sweetnesses in the world. And uh, let them all go, and get lost in the heart of Christ. These two calls to God are common enough among men, and many sincerely resolve to preserve them. But it often happens that a certain rashness of temperaments hinders them from going forward to answer this third call of God. For although the Apostle John rested his head on our Lord's bosom, yet when Christ was seized by the enemies, John deserted him and fled away. So let it not be with thee. When temptations try to arise, then resist all self-seeking, resolute steadfastly by, by thy Savior. And on the other hand, do not allow any impetuous or of temperaments to cause thee to make a false step. So don't let your tempers, your moods, the emotions that you have in a moment allow you to make a false step, but rest, but bring up, but be steadfast uh, by the Lord's side and everything, you know take these things captive and make sure that they're aligned with the Lord. And if thou hast done all well in two ways, 
and will not allow the love of uh, the world and all of created things to lead thee astray, God will then draw you even closer to him. And when you feel this, and when you feel this drawing closer, uh, let no religious um, method or practice uh, of thine own device hold you back. So don't create your own methods or religious, but don't let anything hold you back. But yield your entire self uh, without any form lovingly to him as an instrument in his hands. It is he, he is allowed, let him, uh, he is allowed his way. And then in less time than it takes to say uh, a pater noster, probably something from his time, he will sanctify you and thereby give honor to himself more than you can do by a hundred years of devotions uh, and but no but one might at a certain point begin to ask himself hast thou not now passed beyond the former state and come into this higher one always answer no for no man can go forward otherwise than after the pattern of our Lord Jesus Christ. Rather, ask this of yourself. Have you progressed beyond the spirit of self-love in, in, in the pious exercise that you have practiced? Diligently examine yourself in this regard and then accept God's pleasure as he leads you forward from one devotion uh, to to the to the next the third call was when john when john received the holy ghost and the heavenly door was opened in his soul and this happens to some in the form of an ecstasy or a euphoria to others simply by an absolute total abandonment to god and thus speaks the apostle paul I has not seen, nor ear heard, neither, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared to those who love him. But one must presume to think that he can reach the highest, one must never presume to think that he could reach the highest degree of perfection. It only happens when the outer man is totally absorbed by the inner man. For only then is a man fully mastered by God and the divine marbles and riches are revealed in him. And you must understand, children, that those who are partakers of this privilege must often... Uh, it's kind of hard to read that part. Must also be quite enfeebled and helpless, for nature cannot endure any such strains, nor one has, as it were, died a painful death many times over before reaching this state. So he's talking about, you know, we go through, like I talked about the other day, sufferings and things like that. You know, you go through a lot before you reach the state of total abandonment to God. You throw your whole life on him, you know. Sometimes you have to be broken down, but you do, you know. And you get broken down, you get drawn into the bosom of Christ, you know. You have to give up the whole world, and sometimes it's hard to let go, but it's worth it. Nor does one day bring it all about. This doesn't happen all in way. One day. Nor even in one year of preparation. But... Don't be, don't be frightened, for it takes time, and self-denial and purification of heart, uh, it is also the most perfect way of all. Deny yourself, you know, and allow Jesus Christ to purify your heart. It's the perfect way. It takes time, you know. And by these three processes, does a man acquire the purity of heart that the Apostle John had in a superior degree? And of which our Lord had taught, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. A pure heart is more highly prized by our Lord than anything else on the earth. That a heart is very noble, splendidly adorned with his virtues, the golden temple of the Holy Spirit, in which God loves to dwell. Hallelujah, that is so good. 
It is the oratory of the divine Son in which he intercedes for us with his Father and in which he daily offers his divine sacrifice. A purified heart is the chair of the highest judge. It is the chamber of the rest of the Holy Trinity. Hallelujah. See, that's why we always talk about the heart here in this channel. Because it's the heart where the Lord dwells, and He loves to see a pure heart, and He love and and it's the it's the chamber of the Lord, you know. Purify your heart. There's nothing higher than that, you know. People want to get their minds right. How about your heart? That's where the Lord dwells. Praise the Lord. The light of eternal glory shines within the heart, and it is the secret counsel of the three divine persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It is the treasure house of all the divine riches when the Lord is in it. And it, it is the banquet is a foretaste of the sweetness of everlasting joys in God. It is the symbol of eternal wisdom. It is the tri, tri, tristing, I can't read that, place of divine love and confidence. It is the dispensation of all the graces of Christ in our life and of his passion. It is the heavenly Father's tabernacle with men. It is the spouse of Christ. It is the trusted uh, Trent friend of the Holy Spirit. It is the envy of the saints above. It is the beloved sister of the angels the expectation of celestial armies, the brother of all good men, the terror of evildoers, the complete victory over temptations, a weapon to resist every assault of the enemy, an assemblage of all good gifts, a treasury of all virtues, an example to all men, a restoration of all that was ever lost." And who has a heart such as this? He, we have already described him, who is holy and absolutely with content, in content with God, and intent on God, who is totally content with his God, and his, and his, all of his intentions are on his God, who has no taste for anything else but God, who has fixed his thoughts ever and always on God, to whom all that is not God or has not God for its inspiration is strange and remote and unwelcome, who holds himself aloof from all intruding forms and images, all joys and sorrows of, of his life, as far as may be, and who, and who for this end makes the heart of everything that happens for to the for to the clean all things are clean and to the meek and humble of heart nothing is bitter amen so that was incredible and you know i just want to pray right now dear heavenly father god in jesus name i pray that you would just help us all bring us all to this place that he's speaking of of having such a clean and pure heart god that that we could uh, that we could be uh, the place that you love to dwell. Make our hearts pure, God. Make our hearts beautiful. Make our hearts, like you said, golden, perfect for you to set up your throne, God, so that we can have the sweet savor of heaven in our lives. God, purify our hearts, Lord, in Jesus' name. Create in us this kind of heart, God, in Jesus' name. I just pray that God would give us you give us these hearts, God, that He's speaking of, so that we can uh, be a beautiful place that you can call your home inside of our hearts, God our Lord Jesus Christ, and our precious Holy Spirit. We love you so much. Love you so much. In Jesus' name. So I just love you guys, and I bless you guys, and I hope this message is really good for you. I mean, I just enjoyed it so much. And, uh, you know, what an amazing man of God. And see, there's so many amazing men of God out there, and I'm so happy that the Lord brought this one into my life. You know, he did it on a 40-day fast, and he's been such a blessing to me, so... I just pray that he was a blessing to you uh, and during, during this message. And I pray that you're all blessed in Jesus' name. I love you all. Amen.